so, you know, I figured we'd just go in and talk about making beats and how to, how to build and construct rhythm patterns. And uh, so there are basically three different ways to, to create uh, drum loops or rhythm patterns. First is the re-drum. Then the second way would be the way that you guys have been doing reprogramming drums by sequencing them off your keyboard. And then the third way is the Dr. Rex loop player. So you're, you, you're not really that familiar with this, huh? Uh, no, I just, I don't There's so much to Right. <laughs> well, well, we'll look at the Dr. Rex loop player first here, because this is probably the most fun. I think a lot of people just use this as their go-to, because you basically rely on pre-recorded loops. Now the Dr. Rex loop player uses what we call recycle files. It's a sample loop, but the sample also contains um, slice information, so each one of these hits is cut up in the sample. So I'm gonna scroll through here and you can hear each one of the hit hits. Right? And then all together as it plays. So now, because you have each sample, each, each slice of this separated, uh, you can actually go in and convert this. You take that data for each of the slices and export it to the sequencer track. So we'll click on this two-track button, and you'll see in the sequencer, each one of these little notes in the sequencer represents one of the slices on that loop. Okay, and now when I play this, let me solo that. The sequencer is just going through each one of the slices. So now I slowed it down a lot there. I slowed it down about 40% and you hear what happened? It just kind of, because I didn't actually, you're not changing the speed of the audio, you're just changing the speed of when these notes are hit. Are you or just changing the tempo? I'm just changing the tempo. Now you can change the pitch as well. Sorry, that screen's kind of small. Let me zoom in. So now if you want to audition, I'm holding down this option key or the alt key. And that lets you go through the slices. And then this transpose knob, that'll change the pitch. Oops. And then there's synth parameter, sampler parameters that let you change the characteristics of the, of the drums. So I'm giving it a really short decay, tightens things up. Filters. Filter that down, and then I'll use the envelope filter. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at this sequence here. Because everything is sliced up in this, uh, everything is uh, a MIDI, oh, hold on. Everything's a MIDI note. You can actually go in and start editing 
microscopically the MIDI events. Then we can start taking this sound, which is a kick, and then just manually reprogramming that kick. Now, so that's just the drums. You know, you don't, with, with Dr. Rex, there's a lot of content out there. There are bass lines, synth lines, electric piano, all sorts of instrument loops. And I'll show you here, like, a, a few others here. So I'm going to create another instance of that Dr. Rex, and then I'm going to go back up. I'm using this uh, Reason so Soul School uh, uh, sample library, which has drums and bass and... Oh, you know what? Sorry about this. I gotta create a new mixer. Oops. So here's all that cabling stuff you were talking about. <laughs> you don't have to do it. You don't. Um, let me close that out. I, let me start new here. Usually, if you start with a, a, a fresh uh, song file, all you do is you can just go through here and create uh, devices. So I'm going to add a mixer at the top. You always put the mixer first. Um, and the way Reason works, every device that you add below it gets automatically cabled up into the mixer. So I'll go here and I'll add a Dr. Rex loop player. And then I'll, I'll, No, every version has this automatic cabling. Uh, uh, feature. Um, sometimes, for people like me, like I, when I get into Reason, I start going a little nuts, and then I like to tab the back around and start recabling things. Um, but it's not necessary. As I'll show you here, let me go ahead and, and start building this up again. Let me go back to drums. We'll take this. I'm going to change that to 104. And then, I, again, I'm going to take the slice data and I'm going to copy it to the sequencer track by clicking on the two track button. So then you see it appears right there. Then let me create another Dr. Rex loop player. I'm going to go to bases. Okay. So this is just a a loop of a bass line this guy's playing bass on here. And again, it's automatically cabled, so you don't even have to think about that at this point. We'll copy this two track, and I'll go again, and I'm going to create another Dr. X loop player. And let's select one of the guitar parts. <laughs> So here's a loop of guitar playing, and again, they took it, you use this program called Recycle. In Recycle, you can load up any audio file, then you can go in and autom it will automatically add these little slice points in it. Then you save it as a Dr. Rex, or a Recycle Rex file. Two track. So now, using this Dr. Rex is super easy. I mean, after a while, you know, you, you, can, you can go through and just start picking a bunch of different loops. And you do this procedure where you copy a two-track, and then create another Dr. Rex loop player. We'll load up a different sample now. Let's load up these horns. Let's take a listen preview. Copy that two-track. Now I'll go back to my sequencer, and you can see I've got these loops all set up, and when I play it, I've got drums, bass, two guitar parts, and the horns. 